Okay, so you have your notebooks with you today. Um, you should have taken them home from math class with you. So what I want you to do is I want you to open up to the next clean page of your notebooks. And I want you to title expand and factor linear expressions. And the date on it will be for Thursday, which is February 7th, I believe. So title it February 7th, expand and factor linear expressions. And this is truly just a review from sixth grade. Um, just gets a little bit more complicated as you go along each year. So feel free to pause this video anytime you want to. Um, and and get down the notes so that we can go start going through the activities tomorrow. So the first screen, okay, you always know that my PowerPoint clicker does not work. There we go. Okay, the first section is expand linear expressions. Okay, first we have to figure out you know, what is a linear expression? Because sometimes we use these big terms and we don't know what they are. A linear expression, if you define it, do you know what the word linear means? Most of you know that that means a straight line. So linear is a straight line. A linear expression, all that means is a mathematical expression that forms a straight line. But here's the key point to a linear expression. And, key point here contains no variables with exponents. So if you have an expression that has variables with exponents, that will not make a straight line if you graph it. The only way it can be a linear expression is if there's variables with no exponents. So you need to put that in your notes and put a key point if you've got some highlighters or things like that at your house, crayons or things that you want to underline this or highlight it somehow, that would be great. And so second, we need to really know what does it look like. So let's look at a few of them and we're going to decide yes or no whether we think they are linear expressions or not. So the first one, 8x plus 5. Yes or no, do you think that's a linear expression? Yes, it is because it is an expression with no exponents in the variables. Let's look at the next one, 7 minus 9x. Yes or no? Of course, that isn't a linear expression because there are no exponents in the variables. If this had said 7 squared, would it still have been a linear expression? Think about that for a minute. If it said 7 to the second power, would it still be a linear expression? Yes, because the variable is what we're looking at being raised to a power. Okay, let's look at this one. 8x squared plus 8. No, that would not be a linear expression. X is raised to the second power. 10X plus 4 minus 7Y plus Z. All of those have, we have one, two, three variables, but none of them are raised to an exponent. So will this form a linear expression? Then yes, it will. And the last one we're going to look at, negative 11Z to the second power plus 5X minus 9. Is that going to form a linear expression? No, because we have z to the second power. So that will not form a linear expression. So let's look. We're going to skip this part. Let's see. Let's look at this because um, there is a time when I, you, know, you think about what is a real world situation for 4 times 2 plus 5. Um, you could think of anything. You could think of I have 4 children. And I'm going to give each one of them two pieces of candy and five pieces of gum. So how much am I giving them? Four times seven is 28. But there's a different way to do it. And I want you to kind of think about it. I want you to simplify this expression, but you cannot use four times seven. You must think of another way to simplify it. You don't have to write this down in your notes right here, any of this really, because um, this is mainly just me and you, talk, you and I talking. Um, this one right here. Instead of 4 times 7, how else could we write that? Could we write it 4 times 2 plus 4 times 5? Could we write it that way? Well, let's check it and see because you already told me this is 4 times 7, which is 28. 
correct? Let's see what this is. 4 times 2 is 8, and 8 plus 20 is 28. Did we get the same answer? Absolutely. So that means we could do it either one of these ways. Do you remember what property this is? That's a property to it. Do you remember the name of this property where it distributes this to each of the things inside of the parentheses? See if you can remember it. It's distributive property. Okay? So, using the same process that we used over here, and then also thinking about terms, let's see if we can figure out how to simplify this. Now, we know that this is 7 times 10 minus 3 times 7. So this is 70 minus 21, which equals 49. As long as we got numbers in there, that's the way you would do it. You would follow PEMDAS and you would do that. It's a few slides later where we're going to get some variables in there where it's going to be a little bit different. You could also say 7 times 6 plus 7 times 4. Now, what you have to think about here is this is a 3, but remember how we talked about terms? That is a negative 3. So what is negative 3 times 2? It's negative 6. And what is negative 3 times 5? It's negative 15. So let's go ahead. This is 42 plus 28 minus 6 minus 15. Okay? I want you to calculate that for me. If you've got a phone, you can use your calculator there. If you've got a calculator at home, figure that out. Let's see. 70 minus 6, which would be 74, and 74 minus 15 would be, is 59 correct? One of you kids over here, check me. Check, get the calculator, please, and check this. I think it is 59. Okay. So pause the video anytime you feel like you need to. Put this and calculate it. 42 plus 28 minus 6 minus 15. My son and my daughter are in the classroom with me, so they're helping me out a little bit. I wonder which daughter. Is 59 correct? Okay, so Jay says I'm wrong, so let's see. Ah, oh, it's 49. Thank you, Jay. 49. Well, that took a little longer than I wanted it to. So let's put the algebra twist in it, okay? How would you simplify this? 7 times t plus 5. How would we simplify that to get rid of these parentheses? Because we don't really need to solve an algebra equation without getting rid of those parentheses. So you would still distribute. So you would say 7 times t is 7t. And 7 times positive 5 is positive 35. Okay? Look at another one. Same thing. 7 times 3 is 21t. And then 7 times positive 5 is 35. Get my color here. 3 times 4t is 12t. And positive 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. next one is negative 2 times t, which is negative 2t. Negative 2 times positive 7 is negative 14. And the last one, when you have a subtraction outside of the parentheses, do you remember what that means? It, it really, to be honest with you, it just means opposite. So what is the opposite of what's inside of here? It also means you're taking everything times negative 1. However you would like to view it is fine with me. I don't care. That would be negative 3x, and the opposite of 4 is negative 4. Okay? Or negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. Okay. Okay. Um, if, I want you to write these down in your notes and see if you can simplify them, and we may go over these for power work tomorrow.
Okay, this, this is the practice that we're going to do when you come into class tomorrow. Um, for now, we're going to take a little brain break. This is for all of you out there that said we need to have a comedian on the video. Here is my attempt at comedy. What did the triangle say to the circle? Pause the video until you can think of it. You're so pointless. Now everybody laughs. That's funny. Ha ha ha. Okay, that's my comedy. That's the reason I'm teaching and on a stand-up comic, Briley. Okay, so now we're going to be factoring linear expressions. So you're going to kind of start a new section of your note. First, we were expanding linear expressions where you take them and you get rid of the parentheses and expand them out. Now we're going to factor them. We're going to have the, uh, the final product and we're going to put them into parentheses. And you'll have to know how to do both in algebra class when you get over there. Okay, so factor out the GCF in each expression. So, for example, if we have 3 plus 6, think about those two terms and think about what is the GCF for 3 and 6. Well, it's 3. 3 goes into 3 one time plus 3 goes into 6 two times. So this and this are equivalent. They are the same thing. 3 plus 6 is 9 and 3 times 3 is 9. They're the same exact thing. It's just a different way of writing it. You have to know how to move. It's almost like when we did fraction decimals and percents and I said you have to know how to know 1 half, 0.5, and 50% they're all the same thing. You have to be able to go back and forth between these pretty easily. Okay, so let's look at 8 and 12. What do 8 and 12 have in common? A 4. So if I factor out the 4, how many times will 4 go into 8? And how many times will it go into positive 12? This is 20 and 4 times 5 is 20. That is correct. Okay, let's factor out here. What do these two terms have in common? We have a positive 5 and a negative 20. 5 will go into both of them. 5 will go into 5 one time. 5 will go into negative 20. Negative 4 times. Or minus 4. The reason I'm saying it like that, you're going to find out here in just a minute. What will go into both 12 and 16? 4. 4 will go into 12. Well, actually, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Because so here's what some people are going to say. Well, 2 will go into it, and 2 will. 2 will go into 12. How many times? 6, and it will go into 16 8 times. The way you know that if you have factored your linear expression all the way as far as it will go is what's inside this parentheses needs to be um, as simplified as possible. If there is still something else that can be factored out of this, then you need to go back and figure out, okay, wait, this GCF is wrong. That's not the GCF. It's a common factor, but it's not the GCF. So you need to figure out what the GCF is, and it's 4. And 4 will go into 12 three times, and it will go into 16 four times. Notice there's nothing in common here. There's nothing in common here. There's nothing in common here. There is here, so that gave me the hint. Wait a second. This is not the GCF. I've got to figure out something else. And that's a common mistake, so make sure you're aware of that. Negative 10 plus 35. I know that 5 can be factored out of both of them. 5 will go into negative 10. Negative 2 times. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. And then it will go into that 7 times.